Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast Wrestling Edition. Today, we are back with our wrestling expert, Mr. Jacob Mason. How are you doing today, sir? I'm fantastic, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. There's a lot to cover in the world of wrestling, which we are going to cover all of the important things that you need to know, might have missed in these past couple of weeks since the last time we've been on. Uh, Jacob, man, let's go right. We're going to start with AEW. We're going to focus on AEW first, and then we'll transition to WWE. Uh, First off with AEW, which I think you've been calling for a while, that Hangman was going to become the new champion. And kudos to you, sir. Another one for you. (laughs) Yeah, uh, so full gear, which goes back to very long-term storytelling mm-hmm. so if you go back to being the elite uh i mean the full gear thing they were making fun of adam page back then mm-hmm. and now he wins it which was awesome i mean i was happy as hell seeing that the pay-per-view all in all i didn't like it as well as uh as all out but that being said it was still a great pay-per-view it's still a great time it's awesome seeing adam page finally hold that championship hold that gold yeah, I don't think anything this year was going to be all out. No. So, which they're comparing themselves to themselves, so I understand that. But no, it was really good. It was really cool seeing him win. It was cool seeing him win instead of one of the new people who just got there, like a punk or um, Brian Danielson or like Adam Colby, the one to take it because Hangman's been there. So it was cool to see him win, cool to see all the responses. It was a good overall win, but him winning Mr. 10 million belts, Kenny Omega, he's going to be gone for a little bit, right? Yeah, so he's taking some time off. Apparently, he's been wrestling with an injury, Mm -hmm. which is kind of amazing considering how good his matches have been. Right. But he's taking some time off, which is fine. I mean, he he ran as a champion for a, a good while. So sit back, take a break, let your jets cool, and come back, and he'll still have a massive pop when he comes back. Right, right, right. And with Hangman, he already has his first number one contender, right? Yeah. So Daniel Bryan comes in, or Daniel Bryan is the number one contender for the mat or for Hangman's title. Which Daniel Bryan has been a straight killer on AEW. <laughs> uh. It's not nice Daniel Bryan. It's very mean Daniel Bryan, which is awesome. I mean, it's not like a gimmicky, snarky thing. Like, it's just very, it's being done very well. Where you have Daniel Bryan, who, you know, when he came in, everyone, oh my God, it's Daniel Bryan, let's go. I mean, the hype train was real. And now the way Daniel Bryan has acted as a heel, you're like, fuck Daniel Bryan. I don't want him to win. He's being an asshole. Great. I mean, it, it's it's booking done right, booking done well. It's, yeah. It's just been awesome. It's kind of crazy, too, because, like, the people who might not have – because I don't think this side of Daniel Bryan was truly seen in WWE because now he can be, like, a, full, a full-fledged heel killer, and he's doing very well. And I'm interested to – Ask for your opinion on how do you think that match goes? I think you have to, you have to have a uh, hangman page one. You can't have Daniel Bryan one. You can't, you can't build that story up for years, essentially to have him lose his first title defense. I understand it's Daniel Bryan and all that, but doing that would just, I think that's some like WWE hokey booking bullshit. Mm-hmm. And I don't want that. <laughs> so I th- it has to it 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 just has to be Adam Page. When is there when are they scheduled to go at it? Next next uh next Wednesday. I believe okay. December thirteenth. It's like their winner is coming <laughs> show. Gotcha, gotcha. And with other WWE people who are there being like What's Adam Cole up to right now in AEW for the people who haven't been? I see that he is basically 
getting some uh, undisputed reunions in AEW. So for the other people who haven't been seeing what's been going on with Adam, where's he at pecking order wise in AEW right now? So Adam Cole is in the elite. I'm saying that finger quotes here, um, but he's part of the super click, which is a node back to the bullet club when Adam Cole was in there with the young bucks. Cause that's who he's running with. He's been running with the young bucks mm-hmm. pecking order. Uh, Adam Cole being Adam Cole, he thinks he's, uh, you know, top dog when he's not. Like uh, when Kenny said, hey, I'm going, like, keep an eye on things, uh, Adam Cole goes, yeah, I got this, Kenny, no problem. Just kind of Kenny looks at him and goes, I wasn't talking to you. Let's talk to the Bucks. <laughs> you know? Which is great because for the people who watch indie wrestling, there was – an entire massive angle of Kenny and the young bucks and Adam Cole, Adam Cole, quote unquote, tried poisoning the young bucks and killing them. When the Indies do this hokey shit, I like it, but when WWE does it, I think it's stupid. Why? Um, just why? Cause it's WWE and I just hate their bullshit. Okay. I've been uh, known to be a little biased from time to time on this <laughs> podcast. Anyways, going back to that, you end up having the whole thing of the Bucks turning on uh, the Bucks and Kenny turning on Adam Cole. And it's just kind of cool because you're seeing old stuff be revised, but with a twist and everything's more in the, in the limelight now. Can you have this massive company backing it? Right. I think, and then also at AEW, which was the promo heard around the world the past couple of weeks, was CM Punk, MJF. That promo, I know you've seen it. I've seen it. There was a lot of references, <laughs> a lot of uh, Easter eggs, if you paid attention straight up. I mean, CM Punk called him a less famous Miz. Like, that's probably my favorite, favorite line of that promo. and. With that promo, because it caught fire, Jacob, it just, I think it's from the days where they trust you, say what you want, get it over, and here we are. Yep. I mean, this feud coming in, this was someone I wanted to see Punk uh, face off at some point. Not because of the actual wrestling match itself to be fine and dandy. I don't care about that. I want the build up. I want these I want these absolute killer promos and just tearing each other apart on the mic. I love it. That's what I that's what I want. I want this entire show and I am sports entertained. <laughs> to I mean, say M- the least. MJF brought up how quickly Punk's UFC career ended. Like there were some real freaking shots at each other. Like, and that's what the imagination thing of it too, like. Did you think, like, was this a shoot? Like, there was some, like, it had that blend, like, wait, are they, like, do they seriously not like, like, they're throwing some real personal stuff at each other right now. It's like, oh, that's what makes wrestling at its peak. I I have to imagine, I mean, the way I think it went down was probably Punk and MJF talking to each other and being like, all right, hey, can I talk about your UFC career? Hey, can I say say that you're just second rate Miz or whatever else. So I feel like they're probably like, oh, okay, yeah, no, this this is on the table, this is off limits, and just go out and just have the promo. Because if you have two great mic workers do a scripted promo on each other, we're going to know about it and we're going to bitch about it. Yeah, That was done perfectly because people are questioning, is it a shoot? Was it real? Was it rehearsed what what was it nobody knows but everybody's talking about it everyone's talking about it including wwe because for the first time they've responded to aew because after that promo i mean edge brought it up he has he told miz you have other promotions talking about you making comparisons like i was like well maybe because it's edge and he's a hall of famer and he's great so he was allowed to say that but i was like Oh, you just mentioned AEW CM Punk MJF promo because any wrestling fan knows that's what he was talking about. So the crowd's like, oh, 
we had a um, we had a shot, and WWE got a little more edgier that episode too because Liv Morgan bringing up the people, like telling Becky Lynch she's the reason her friends got fired. Like I'm like, whoa! Now, did you were you okay with those? Because I've seen some people in the stupid crazy family that were kind of in the internet wrestling community have issue with that. What? How did you feel about those promos? Oh, I didn't. I, I I'm all about it because when wrestling feels real. It's good. Yes. If you can, especially nowadays, because you have, you know, 8 million podcasts, including ours, you know, talking about wrestling, you have entire everyone tweeting about it, posting about it on Facebook, Instagram. Everyone's talking about wrestling. Everyone knows the news as soon as something drops. When you can blur the lines, wrestling is good. I agree. And going into that too with Survivor Series, which, I think they did a poor job in uh, building up, by the way. It just came as like, oh, yeah, Survivor Series is here. One thing which was real, I mean, I didn't like the ending per se, but Becky and Charlotte, I kind of, I really want to know what really set them like to drift apart because they don't, they don't like each other anymore. It, it's legit. I don't know. I'm sure whatever it is, it's probably well deserved. <laughs> I mean, it all start. I mean, we saw it. When Charlotte went rogue in that title exchange and threw it on the ground to make Becky get it like a freaking dog, and she didn't like that. And Charlotte getting escorted out of like the rings, keeping her away from Becky. Beck, like Seth Rollins talking about it on episodes, everyone talking about it. Like for that rift to happen, and then for still their professionals to be able to work together, that was a match I was excited for because there was real heat between the two of them. But, hey, maybe Becky is just like, you know what, y'all? I'm tired of you being like a 20-time champ. I'm sick of it. I'm like, hey, that's all of us. Mm. And if anyone can get away talking shit about about and or to Charlotte Flair, it's Becky Lynch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because and, you ain't gonna, what are you going to do, do to Becky Lynch? Fire? Nah. I mean, the last one who really tried was uh, Peyton Royce talking about other people getting these title opportunities to give her a chance. She had her one title, and then she was gone. Title match, and then she was gone. Yep. But going off with Charlotte, since we're here, and we'll be jumping around. That's how we do it here. You saw Ric Flair's comment saying that Charlotte Flair deserves a Roman Reigns push. Yep. What the hell was your initial reaction to that? I laughed. (laughs) I legit, I just started laughing. For those who do not know, Charlotte Flair is how many times? How many times is she a champion? If you include her NXT run, thirteen. <laughs> She's a thirteen-time champion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long has she been in the company? Uh, twenty. Because we actually did an anniversary episode for the Four Horse Women. Six years. Six years. So over two point. I don't know two point something a year she's getting a championship Mm -hmm. you're getting a pretty damn good run i don't know how much more roman reigns-esque you could be like considering you are the roman reigns of the female division i can make a case that she that roman reign i mean roman reigns should have been asking for a charlotte flair run easily roman reigns is only like a four-time champion four to five and charlotte's 13 like I like I think Charlotte's run's been better than Roman Reigns career wise. Yeah, I I'd agree with that statement. They're both going to go and set records. Yeah. So I don't know what he was talking about. That does she want does he want her to have her own like head of the table and can say what I mean she already says what she wants. So it's like I I don't understand what he was saying there. Just I feel like Rick was just throwing more hate towards towards his own daughter because Becky Lynch has had issues with Ric Flair. Here's a quote at one point about Ric Flair. This is a legend at one point. This legend is 16-time world champ. Ric Flair is now jealous of me. It's cool for me. Now trying to use me to get club to promote whatever he's going on because he's dug himself into a hole with other things. And these were like quotes from Becky Lynch not doing WWE stuff like talking to Sports Illustrated and like in those off-the-cuff pod stuff. But what are we... It's crazy, man, that he really said that. 
I mean, what else could you ask for? I mean, honest to God, if you if you are a wrestler in WWE, everyone wants to be like Charlotte because she's had the best wrestling push. She's had the most consistency yes. in WWE. I mean, what else could you ask for? The only time she's missed time is when that doctor screwed up, screwed up saying that she was pregnant, but she wasn't. And when she had to take time off to fix her uh, surgery on her breast, that was it. I don't, I don't get it. Like what, what else could you ask for? There's no, I mean, she's already won the rumble. She's won every title. Remember when she came back randomly with Asuka, won the tag team titles out of the blue. Then it's like, they break up. It's like, oh, I'm challenging Asuka for the title. Like, There's nothing more you can do besides, I guess, have more main of, I mean, they had the, she had the one main event at WrestleMania. That's about it. And then she, this is my problem with her too. When she was asked about this stuff and she said, if I was a man, this wouldn't be an issue. And I, I really had an issue with that because no, we are here right now. We just, we bitch about Roman Reigns. I mean, every man who's had a huge, I mean, shit. I mean, John Cena, everybody is just like, if someone feels like you've had a long title, like rain and you don't quote unquote deserve it, or there's other people there, you're going to bitch about it. So I don't, that really kind of rubbed me the wrong way saying just because she was a woman that people had an issue with it. It's definitely not because she's a woman. No one gives a shit about that. It's 2021. Mm -hmm. Fuck out. If you have an issue with that, fuck out of here. No, no one cares. 13 titles in six years, that's too much. It's too much. Yeah. Kenny Omega had a hell of a run with the title. Mm -hmm. Decimated people. Mm -hmm. Lost the title, taking some time off away from the camera to heal up, but also to cool down his character because how long can you run with the title before it becomes too much? Mm -hmm. Good booking. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, and with Charlotte saying that stuff too, it's like, no, there's we can we could literally dedicate a whole episode to times where you should have done the favors and you won. And you have the power to say, no, I shouldn't win this. I mean, shoot, this past SummerSlam, she just takes the title off of Nikki Cross when Nikki just won. Don't get me started on the year that she just destroyed Rhea Ripley. And then the Tuesday before, like, WrestleMania, she just randomly takes the title off Asuka. Like, there's instances where it's like, come on, man. And I'm not, not, I mean, she's a great performer. She's reliable. I mean, she deserves what she has. But saying that, like, people bitch about you having titles just because you're a woman, that's, that's ridiculous. I hate Charlotte Flair. For me, it goes back to when I forget which time she beat Asuka, probably like the 47th or something. And she won the title off of her. Right and before she was WrestleMania. Back, and she was out back crying like, I needed this. I deserve this. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, and it wasn't like a heel promo. It was just like her like legit crying. Like the problem is everyone thinks Charlotte's entitled as fuck. Let's be honest. Yes. Ride your daddy. Ride your daddy's coattails. Hey, I get it. You're Dad Rick Flair. You're you're gonna flare it up. That's fine. But don't come out here and scream that I'm not riding my dad's coattails like she's done in the past. I'm my own person. Well then why are you coming out to a remix of his theme song? Why are you coming out to the robe? Why are you literally copying? You do a modified finisher that he has. Like you do the woo chops. I don't get it, dude. I don't understand Charlotte. I don't, and it's potentially that she, I mean, I don't know if it's official or not. It was coming through, like, ringside news that her and Andrade might have split because Andrade, which is kind of crazy, like what you said in 2021, this is the world we're in. If someone unfollows you on social media, it means, "Mm, you're breaking up. So, (laughs) I I, I don't know what's going on there. I don't think if anyone would address it first, it'd be Andrade or Ric Flair. I don't think Charlotte will, but that'd be kind of crazy. I need Becky to address it. She might, because when Andrade got released, I mean, she was filing other wrestling trademark names, given that initial scare, like she might go with them, but hey, to each their own. Uh, one more thing from a woman's thing. Uh, Sasha Banks, who, another four horse woman, which I actually really respected this quote from 
uh, her about Ronda Rousey, who another person who, you know, just came in. It's like, oh, I want to earn the respect of the locker room and then won the title in like two months. Uh, Sasha talked about it. She was like pissed off that Ronda Rousey could come in, get more money than her, get a bigger locker room than her and bring all these people backstage to get more time, like family and friends than her. And she's like, excuse me, who are you and what do you do? Which I know we've talked about it with part timers outside of recently shout out to bad bunny who just come in and (laughs) they get all this treatment and then the full-time talent gets pissed. I can understand. I understand exactly what Sasha Banks is saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even a massive Sasha Banks fan, but I agree with 95% of what she's saying. I do understand why she's making more money than you. You might not like it, but she is more popular than you. She is going to bring more eyes to the product than you. That's just the business. Yeah, at that at that point in time, I I 100% yeah. agree. Now, fast forward, I mean, she's in the Mandalorian now, so her she's getting Disney. So Sasha's fine, but at that time, 100%. I agree yeah. with you. And hey, if she can work it out in her contract to get a, her own private locker room that's bigger, hey, you you make a contract every year or however many years, put that in your next contract, you know, restructure your contract, yeah. do what you got to do to make things happen. If it, if it bothers you that much, I understand why you're pissed off, but I also understand the business side of it. I agree. I agree. With you. One more thing, just swinging back to Becky and Charlotte. I'll never forget this where, this is building up to Survivor Series How Charlotte literally said there's nothing natural about Becky Lynch. And Becky tweeting, did Charlotte just say there's nothing natural about me, all caps? <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> and then everyone's like, oh, the comments just went to freaking town on that. But Jacob, man, nope. said, go ahead. Don't go to Twitter war with Becky Lynch. Yeah, you really don't. Becky will win because Becky don't give a shit. Yeah, you, that's you, why people like Becky. Yeah, you you don't want to do you don't want to do that. Um, with Survivor Series, last thing, the only other thing from that pay per view, two other things. One, Randy Orton not now having the most pay per view matches in WWE history, and a couple of days ago breaking the Raw record for most Raw matches. That's wild to think about, man. Because like Randy Orton. He's always been there. Like the only time he was really gone, as you know, when he was having his drug issue and got that taken care of. He's never really left for Hollywood at all. Dude, he's been a constant. And I feel like, obviously, like the knock on Randy is you could tell when he cares and when he doesn't care. But like he's been a constant, and not just in WWE, but in the wrestling world, man. Like, especially that summer where his RKO like YouTube videos of him just popping up. That was gold. Like salute to him, man. Oh yeah, for sure. You nailed on the head though. When Randy cares, Randy, it's, it's obvious when he doesn't care. It's obvious. Mm -hmm. Like this whole like RK bro thing. You can tell he's called too. You called that too. Genuinely enjoyable. And it is, it's great to see because a lot of times in, it's kind of one of these things where Randy's so good, he can make things like extremely boring depending on the match and if he likes it or not. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I absolutely hate Randy Orton. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think Randy Orton is just one of the best people ever. Mm-hmm. It comes down to what mood is he in that day or if he's shitting in people's luggage. Yeah. I 100% agree with you. The only other thing from Survivor Series is we all knew that Roman was going to beat Big E, but. Biggie showed me, like, they gave him a stage, and he showed me some things. I'm not going to lie. I watched that match. We already knew what the result was going to be, but I was like, good for you, man. Like, you showed you're a worthy champion. Uh, my favorite spot from that was when Roman was in the corner doing his little ooh-ah thing, and Biggie just walked up to him like, what's up? And then Roman was like, shit. But that that was those were the only main points from that and um how are you feeling about biggie as champ because there's this video going out of this guy i don't know if he's with ringside news or sports kita but he 
was basically tearing into the internet wrestling community saying Big E's been a good champ. Like he's a good baby face. The crowd loves him. Fans love him. He's doing all these tours. He's been promoting big college football games, big boxing matches. But the internet wrestling community is not rocking because he's because we've been programmed to only like anti-hero people, which what do you think about Big E and what he was saying about like nowadays people just don't like a generally good baby face? I I like Big E as champion. <laughs> One of the main reasons I like Big E as champion is because it's different. We're not getting the same cookie cutter bullshit champion, mm-hmm. a la Roman Reigns, a la Charlotte Flair. Big E, we all wanted Big E to win years ago. Mm-hmm. We're like, let him just let the guy do his thing. He'll do great. Um, that guy's completely right, though, with the whole like, we like anti heroes. We do. We grew up. I mean, I know me and you grew up watching Stone Cold Steve Austin, watching The Rock. Mm-hmm. These guys are played both good and bad guys, but when they are good guys, they didn't take no shit. They dish out just as much stuff to the heels as the heels dish out to them. Mm-hmm. So, because in that video, that guy also said, like, we were, like, spoiled with the Attitude Era. I, and yeah. It's true. Honest to God, it, it, it's true. And that's the biggest downfall to wrestling, especially with the internet wrestling community. Wrestling was so good. And we remember it with such, was it like rose colored glasses? I think that's what yeah. the saying is. Mm-hmm. Um, that everything else is going to be shit compared to that. Now it's nowadays it's a little different because for the longest time we just had WWE. As that that was it. Now you actually got AEW. Mm-hmm. TNA is actually worth a semi piss, you know. And you have New Japan, all that stuff. Everything has more access now. Big E's champ is great. How can you not like Big E? I don't understand that. Me either. And it's the fact, too, that the dude's doing the work, man. Like, we're here sharing videos like, oh, my gosh, he was just pumping up, like, the Big Ten Championship or this, that. And you're saying, like, oh, my gosh, he's here doing the thing for, like, a Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder fight. Like, the dude is doing his job. And first of all, also, when he was doing those things, those were on freaking Fox. So what the hell was Roman Reigns doing? That's supposed to be his network. Go promote your shit. But, oh, but yeah. anyway. But yeah, man, I, well, that video was really like just making me sit back. Like, like you said, man, we were spoiled because we grew up in that attitude era. And like the good guys was what you wanted from like the good guy. Even people older than us who had who everyone has it. Terrible bosses. Bosses you wish you could just hit them with a stunner. That is why Stone Cold will resonate forever because everyone's going to have a terrible boss that you just wish you could come in every other Monday and beat the shit out of them. It's the truth. There will never, that will never, you could be like, Hey, this guy's thing was, he always took it to the boss. No one can not ever relate to that except a boss. Yeah. Like you could just, you could walk in. You wish you could just walk in, flip your boss off, stunner him. Drink some beer over them and leave. But you can't do that in the real world. That's why Stone Cold will resonate forever because he gave people that escape. Yeah. You know, something else, you know, when you were talking about, like, Big E doing the Big Ten stuff and, Mm -hmm. like, doing the Tyson Fury stuff. I know how hype I was when I seen Big E doing, like, the promos for the Tyson Fury fight. Mm -hmm. It's so cool as a wrestling fan. I'd be like, oh, shit, there's the dude. From the show that I watch. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't... How can you not like that? You were literally trying to get more people to get into this business and or get into this community. Like, mm-hmm. I don't understand how you could not like that. My also thing, too, that with every great thing WWE does, it just gets you more mad. Because you're like... It proves that if the machine's behind you, they can get you to promote this. Like, they can get you places... So it's like, why weren't you doing that for other people? I understand being like the reliable people, like John, like the ruthless aggression area, like Cena, and like setting him out to everything. But if you're able to send Big E to all this stuff, why couldn't you send other people who needed more shine? Shoot, the Miz was just on Dancing with the Stars, got like ninth place. Like 
that's my thing too. Like, why aren't you promoting other people like that? Because for a time it was Roman Reigns. I mean, it still is Roman Reigns, four horse women when mostly Charlotte. It's mostly Charlotte, but the four horse women when Rhonda, Bad Bunny was here. It's like you weren't promoting that. I feel like they weren't promoting Drew as much as they should have. Because, I mean, I think Drew was a fantastic champion. Like, that is a champion I was proud of during real COVID era where there was no fans and he was carrying that company. So it's like they pick and choose who they push like that. And that kind of pisses me off. Yeah. And you can take you can take people that aren't being used and you know WWE can get them on some sort of TV show. Mm-hmm. Why aren't you? Why aren't you doing that? And he also did the Breakfast Club, and they were talking about like one of the, uh, I think it was Angela Lee, the female host, said how she likes like Bootio cereal, and she had no idea that was Big E cereal. Yeah. <laughs> and like she had no idea, like he was the, like obviously when he came, he was WWE champion, but it's like, oh my gosh, yeah, I love that cereal. Like we've had it before, and this and that. It's like, they they have so much things that they could be really utilizing, but I'm I'm right. You're right with the internet wrestling community spoiled and all of that. So spoiled when things get tough, you know, they just bring back Brock Lesnar for the umpteenth time to fight Roman Reigns for the umpteenth time. And Sami Zayn getting screwed for a second. I was like, wow, Sami Zayn's gonna get a real title opportunity. Then he gets screwed. And we have Brock and Roman again at a uh, Day one, because there is no December pay-per-view in WWE, which is weird, but they're having two, quote-unquote, in January with, yeah, I mean, like, you, like you're like you already going to say, Brock Lesnar, notable name by casuals and wrestling fans, brings a lot of money, and he still has the ability to come, and, you know, someone's literally going to get their ass kicked, which is enjoyable to see, but it's Brock. He shows up once every two months from him, Minnesota or Canada, wherever he's living now. I got to say this much. The promo that Brock Lesnar and Sami Zayn had was my favorite Brock work I've seen since him, R-Truth, and Paul Heyman were in the ring together. I agree. I agree. It was very different. It was very, oh, okay then. Brock on his own just being a face and just having fun. I'll take that Brock. Mm -hmm. I, I I will take that Brock. And if you keep that, bro, I wish they would just keep him away from the title. Yeah. You know, I'd be I'd be so much cooler with that. But I I from a business standpoint, I understand. I don't have to agree. I don't have to like it as a wrestling fan, but I get it as a business guy. <laughs> as a business, as a as a wrestling expert on a podcast looking through, like, hmm, I gotta see. I got to see how uh, this is working. But yeah, man, day one, which whatever the hell type of pay-per-view that's going to be, it is what it is on that. We can go back to that. Let me ask something else about the day one Mm pay-per-view. Why does the logo look like a big Kmart ad? (laughs) I literally looked at that logo and thought like Kmart sponsoring this? Because that's exactly what it looked like to me. Well, I don't even think most Kmarts are gone, so it's like... That's what I thought! <laughs> so, so I don't know who's sponsoring this, and it's just like... It was weird, man. Like I'm like, why does this pay-per-view exist? Hill. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's terrible. Day one, but I don't care. Once we get to January, it's going to be picking up, picking up our season again, because we'll be able to rumble, which means we're going to be here a lot again, so that's mm-hmm. exciting. Oh, yeah. Well, let's go to NXT, man. Uh, War Games was just recent, but before War Games, we're going to talk about Johnny Gardano. Uh, He will be talking tonight. Uh, I don't, I think his contract's up as of tonight. I think he's going to be walking away. I don't know if he's going to be signing with anyone relatively soon, because I think he's going to just be like there for Candice, because this is their first child that they're going to be having. So I feel like he really wants to take some time away for that. What do you think? Oh, I think he's staying. Really? Oh, yeah. I think he's staying 100%. What changed? I thought you thought he was leaving. I, initially, yes. I thought he would be leaving for sure. 
the problem is during uh, the lead up mm -hmm. to war games and during war games and all the promos about war games, I'll have to deal with Johnny Gargano and them being very open about like, yeah, this might be my last time. Yeah, this might be. I don't know if I'll be back. Blah, 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 blah. They kept talking about it. If he was actually leaving, that shit don't get talked about. When Adam Cole left, they didn't talk. They didn't talk about it. True. Do I think? Do I think it would be dumb for him to stay? One hundred percent, absolutely. Man, that's but like, mm, okay. No one's got that money like WWE does. Uh, don't. Well, I guess the cons do, but. I was gonna say, don't say that because you know they uh, unfollow. They uh, <laughs> they'll tell you they'll release you saying because of budget cuts, right? <laughs> I I just don't. They talk about it too much for me to go. Oh yeah, he's gone. Because me and my wife are talking about it during war games. She's like, you know, you think Johnny's going to I'm like they're just talking about it too much. They wouldn't acknowledge it. Ex its existence. I agree. If he I, just, wasn't sick. I really just think he's ah man. I know he just wants some time away. I think honestly, because of the future child coming and being there for Candace. Now, will we see something after we record? Like, oh, he just signed a deal. I mean, we always have something, but I, I see where you're I see where you're coming from. I really do now thinking about it because they were promoting it a lot. Yeah, I mean it's it could be one of those things where he goes, I just need some time away. You know, I got some options I need to think about. Thank you guys. Blah, 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 blah. And he's just going to go and hang out with Candace and their kid, which as he should 100%, but uh, then he'll just pop up randomly and that he'll be back in NXT. I don't see him going to the main roster. No, no, he's not going there. What did you think of War Games? It was weird having no William Regal say War Games. Yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah, me either. I also didn't like how bright and vibrant War Games was. Like, seeing War Games should be dark and dingy and mm -hmm. just gritty looking and all that. But, you know, bright, vibrant colors, which just doesn't work. I still can't get past it but war games itself some matches i thought were better than i expected them to be some matches were worse than i expected them to be it was just it was nxt takeovers are not nxt takeover or nxt takeovers are not of now are not nxt takeovers of old i don't get that super hype feeling of like oh shit takeovers coming out like Oh, we got plans like no, cancel this plan. We're watching more games or we're mm -hmm. watching takeover. We're watching whatever. You know, those pay-per-views used to mean a lot. I just feel like yep. it's watered down now. I do too. And I really I truly believe it's the fact that Triple H has been gone. And it's the fact too that we didn't know he was gone until like a couple months ago. It was like, oh yeah, he had a car. I was like, no, man, just say it. He had a heart attack. Like something happened. Like. And that, and so he's been gone all this time, which Sean's been there holding it, and obviously like Vince and them. But I feel like that was that's been a main problem not having his voice there, and also the talent. I mean, NXT has good talent, but shoot, a year ago, literally a year ago, the whole undisputed era was in at War Games. Now it was just one person. This was the first War Games where undisputed era wasn't like in the match. Yep, which was odd. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's it really is. So and I also some booking did make sense to me. Uh, I know you didn't like her, the skateboard girl, the 20 year old. Uh, Jen, Jen, what the hell's her name? Jen, Jenna Cade or yeah, Jenna Cade. I didn't like that. She I, toxic attraction. You should be making them like the undisputed air and they should just be smoking everybody. Should. I mean, I, I don't think she's going to win the title anytime soon, but it's like that made no sense. For your champion who Mandy's worked extremely hard to rebrand herself, that you have them lose their first war game match. That was stupid. Uh the, nice. men, the men's one, 
I did get hype when I saw DI. I did get hype when they hit that. I was like, oh, this is really going to be Johnny's last match. They're going to send him off. And then, you know, NXT 2.0 Ron and Scott Steiner's son's going to be the face of that thing in, in the next couple months. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy saying that out loud. Right. Yeah. Steiner's going to be running a <laughs> WWE brand. But no, it's not a Steiner. Yeah. Because, I mean, I do find it funny with Braun Breaker, mm-hmm. which, why the hell would you call him Braun? Considering you just got rid of one. Jesus. But, yeah. I didn't think of that. Wow. Yeah. But you're going to call him Braun Breaker. Who looks just like his dad, who's mm-hmm. a Steiner brother. And he's wearing a singlet, which looks just like the Steiner brother singlet. Mm-hmm. But he's not a Steiner brother. We're, or he's not a Steiner. We're just going to completely ignore the fact that he's obviously a Steiner. Oh, they're trying to, you know, rebrand. Like, they don't want him to be riding daddy's coattails. Yeah, but when you're well, then why are you wearing the singlets like that? I, I know, I know. Why are you wearing your facial hair like that? Why are you looking the way you look? That's your biggest downfall. If you want to, if you want to pave your own way, I'm all about that. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, kick ass, do that. But for the love of God, why the hell are you wearing what the hell you're wearing? No, I agree, dude. I, I 100% agree. But, you know, when he gets called up to WWE, they're going to randomly, that's going to be his first storyline. Like, this is the son of former WWE superstar, and they're going to, like, so that's why you should care about him. Here's the question. Are they going to rename him Braun or just Breaker? Uh, I think they should. Which name is he losing? My wife was asking that. Oh, he's losing losing Braun. They're going to call him Breaker. Breaker with two K's because he's edgy. Yeah, it's going to be, it's the Breaker, guys. Like, that's what it's going to be. Oh, my God, it's Breaker. Like, that's what it's going to be. He got the pin, though. Good for him. He did He did get the pin. And you know what? To his credit, when everyone else came out for the NXT 2.0 group, mm-hmm. I was so underwhelmed by all of them. Except for Braun Steiner, son, Breaker. <laughs> Like, literally, like, the one guy's wearing boxing shorts, boxer, uh, the North American champion, what's Dan, Dan, what the hell's his name? Uh, Carmelo Hayes. Yeah. Yeah, so Carmelo, Carmelo Hayes looked good. The Italian guy. I don't even remember his name. (laughs) But the guy who's got the absolute terrible, gimmicky, I'm Italian, hey, type <laughs> bullshit. Like, I laughed my ass off saying that, and not, like, in the funny way. I'm just like, this is some stuff I literally watch at my local indie show up the road with some guy who wears a cheap-ass suit and goes, hey, I'm Italian. Like, whose gimmicky bullshit idea was this? Like, where's Jim Cornette when I need him right oh, now? Oh, Lord, not Jim. <laughs> No. I was I was so underwhelmed by. I'm just like these guys look like nothing. I mean, also, holy shit! Can we talk about the lock and chain that they did for Braun Breaker when they locked out the cage, and he was the one who clearly, clearly uh, was like cutting it, but not cutting it. Yep, yeah, that was bad. That was bad. I mean. You remember when Kane just ripped the door off the hinges back in the day? Shout out to Mayor Glenn Jacobs. (laughs) Yeah, shout out to the freaking man Glenn Jacobs. But that had an impact. You have a that look, it was done very badly. The camera angles are very shit on that. Yeah, that that was humorous. I was laughing at that. Not in a good way. Yeah. I was just it was bad. Johnny's outfit was sweet. I mean, that, that was, was another sweet. thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was all take on all his, for those who didn't watch it, it was all his other takeover gear basically combined in the one, which was super cool. Because he always has a sweet, he always has a sweet outfit for takeovers. Yeah, that was, and, that was good. So I'm going to say something here on the L7C podcast that I have never said before. Okay. All right. 
We're going to talk about the women's NXT war game match for a second here. Blandy McBlanderson, Raquel Gonzalez. I was going to say, you have to tell some people who you call that. I think that's our first time listening. I'm not a fan of Raquel Gonzalez, for those who do not know this. Mm -hmm. But her trash can spot was creative as hell. And I, good job, Raquel. I actually like the spot you did. I'm not even calling you Blandy. Good job, Raquel. I'm semi proud of you. Hey, at the L7C, man, we're fair when it comes to wrestling. If we don't like you, you'll know. But when you do something cool, we, we'll give you your props. Doesn't mean we'll change if we like you or not, but we're definitely going to give you your props. We're I mean, because the, the, I'm sorry to interrupt you, buddy. Oh, no, I was going to say we're fair, just sometimes biased towards some people. Yeah. Some of us are biased. I, I don't know. About <laughs> but uh, for those who did not watch us, did not watch four games, Raquel Gonzalez picked up and put Dakota Kai in a trash can, then grabbed the trash can and started spinning it around and hitting people with it. I've never seen that before. I thought that was super creative. I thought that was probably my favorite spot of the entire women's match. Agreed. Agreed. That or Jade, whatever that Kate or Jane Kate or whatever the skateboard. hell her name is. Yeah, Mrs. Skateboard, who about fell in her entrance of skateboarding. Which, let's talk about that for a second. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's crazy. Let's she's get... only 20, though. That's wild. Okay, she's 20, and that's awesome. So. And she was actually in AEW. She did a few dark matches with them. Why didn't they keep her? Didn't see enough? I don't know. I, I have not the slightest idea. <laughs> but uh, So she came out on her entrance, mm -hmm. which is like a punk skateboarding gimmicky thing that she does. Okay. How do you... You have a gimmick, and you're going to do something. Shouldn't you practice doing something? Yes. Because she came out on that skateboard and damn near busted her ass. Mm -hmm. And so then I had to text you guys, make fun of it first. Then I had to go to her Instagram. They'd be like, well, is she an actually a, a real, like, does she actually skate? Because mm -hmm. she skates, she's definitely just nervous. It is what it is. She doesn't skate. There's never been, like, a picture of her holding anything skateboardy <laughs> at all. So... If you're going to play the part, you should practice the part or just not do it. Just just don't. Just walk out there. Use your skateboard as a weapon. Call it a day. Don't 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 skate. I agree. Uh, a couple more things before we wrap up. Just two more things, really, actually. So WWE creating the next in-line program for their name, image, and likeness. They're hopping into name, image, and likeness, like all the college things. So now they can they have constructed a comprehensive program to recruit and develop potential future superstars by uh looking at college athletes and be like hey we'll pay you x amount to promote our stuff too and if you're interested in coming to wwe you can uh, come up their first person who has a name image and likeness deal was heavyweight freestyle wrestler gabe stevenson who captured gold at the tokyo olympics the agreement allows stevenson to return to the University of Minnesota for a senior season where he's defending his NCAA title while beginning his superstar training with WWE. So you could be can training with WWE while in college and still do your college stuff. And they're going to unveil their first class of name, image, and lightning partnerships in the next coming weeks. It's a real smart. I mean, I have not, this two things. One, super smart business move because since they don't want to do any wrestlers anymore and they want to, they want to get people who most of them may not even know how to wrestle or don't even like WWE, just like the money, teach them their way to wrestle. So that's the only way they know how to do it. So smart on that. The other thing, where the hell did all this money come from when you just cut almost 100 people this year because of budget cuts? So where did this money come from? From the budget cuts. All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I have no that's retorts I have no retort to that. All right. 
<laughs> moving on. So today, I uh, got this article from Ringside that Nick Khan most likely to replace Vince McMahon in WWE. And at first, I was like, who the hell is Nick Khan? And then he is um one of the big presidents of the company. And I'm like, what the hell is this? He's the current president and chief revenue officer of WWE. So he's just about making the money. Jacob, man, I was kind of shocked seeing that because I always thought it'd always be like Stephanie and Shane who get it or Triple H, I thought was always the best option. So what do you think about that? These are all rumors. Yes. Alleged. Yes. So you got that out there. That being said, fuck Nick Khan. <laughs> I'm throwing it out there right now. Fuck Nick Khan. If you have been pissed at WWE for the past year and a half. He's the reason. He's the reason. Yep. Him and Vince McMahon are the reason you are pissed off. Yep. Why are all these releases happening? Boom. Nick Khan. Yep. Why did NXT turn to 2.0 and got like all bright and vibrant and bullshit? Nick Khan. Yep. The only good that could possibly come out of this is the fact if Khan would actually take over for Vince, then we're getting a full-blown Khan versus Khan wrestling war between <laughs> Nick Khan and uh, the president of AEW. Tony Khan? Tony? Tony Khan, thank you. Couldn't think of his first name. Yeah, my only thing with this is like, it's interesting because this dude has no wrestling like background or whatever. He's just their business about the money. Obviously, WWE, they're cutting these people making rough, record profits, so something's happening. As a fan, do you want someone, I guess what type of, it depends on what type of fan you are. Because if you're a huge wrestling fan, you want rest people who understand wrestling, grew up in wrestling, love wrestling, running wrestling companies. You don't want these freaking suits coming from like Wall Street doing it because they don't get it. And then we get crap on TV. Now, if he's yep. smart and if he does, this does happen and he keeps like a Triple H and all of them around and they, he is just a figurehead because he ain't going to come on TV and take a stunner. But like and then have the wrestling people run the wrestling stuff, then we can see something. But if he comes and tries to be like Ben's hands-on and everything, make booking decisions, oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That'd be downfall USA. Literally, it would be, on USA. I think, I think it would be the equivalent of back when ECW was a thing. The real ACW, not the WWE yeah. reboot of that shit. The real ACW. ECW really went to shit when they got a actual television deal and all the suits wanted them doing it a certain way and didn't want this mm -hmm. brutal style, which was the only thing that made ECW ECW. Yep, I agree. I agree. And for the short amount of time, I've, I've known... Nick Khan on a non personal level, he's done nothing but piss me off. Mm -hmm. So I don't want I want WWE to succeed. I want AEW to succeed. I want every wrestling company to succeed. And I want everyone to be firing on all cylinders because that is best for business at the yes. end of the day. Yes. So as much as I shit on WWE, I want WWE to just be awesome. Under this guy's stuff, yeah, financially, it might be awesome for a time being, but that's a short term. Long term, you're going to end up losing. Oh, yeah, you will. You will. Which he he sucks. Like, that's all I could say on that. Like, he's terrible. Like, that's it. That's just that's it. He's terrible. Hope he doesn't. I hope this doesn't happen. It's all rumors. It's like most likely. Don't even see Vince going anytime soon, but we'll see on that. Last thing, Jacob, 17-year anniversary of the first women to main event of Raw, Trish Stratus and Lita. And then literally to the day, the main event of Raw was Becky Lynch versus Liv Morgan. Uh, there's a new meme going around of the angry Liv Morgan fan, which is great, about how she was pissed at Liv. Now we have another one with her and Miz, angry fan. Hopefully they follow this girl for a bit and we see what she looks like all grown up in the future. Where she's like, yeah, I remember that day, but something cool that the two goats, Trish and Lita, 17-year anniversary getting uh, respected. 
by WWE having women main event on Brawl. Jacob, anything else, man? It was great to be back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry for the uh, delays. Man, We're not Mr. Mr. Consistent is not as consistent as he used to be. It's all right. January's coming. That's Rumble time. We're gonna be yeah. here, man. <laughs> but yeah, I'm. That's it. We're we're about to hit our busy season, which I can't wait. The road to WrestleMania, like like I said earlier, as much as I shit on WWE, I do get excited for this time of year because the Rumble's coming up, and that is that's going to be a shit show, dude. I have no idea who. What we do predictions, I have no idea who's going to win. Oh yeah, which hey, I'll that's take what it. makes it great. Yeah. Oh, it's not predictable this year. I mean, depending on how you look at it. Mm-hmm. I, I know who I'm taking in my pick right now. Blind pick. Ooh, okay. All right. Already? Should I throw it out now? Or It's up to you, man. This is your episode. Oh, God. Blind wanna... pick right now. Rock. Whoa. I'm, hey, man. Last year, I believed in you. You threw out Daniel Bryan. I picked Daniel Bryan, and he lost. I was, kind of, I was really pissed. <laughs> I was really pissed. So you're saying rock. Surprise number 30? Could be. Could be surprise number 30. Could be surprise number one. No, he wouldn't do number one. No. It'd have to be 30. 27 or 30. Yeah, I I think Rock, because I'm still sticking with the initial storyline of Rock versus Roman at Mania. Okay. All right. You can't add anything more on that. You got to end it there. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the L7C podcast. It's great to have Jacob back. We're gonna. It's almost January, which he said the road to WrestleMania. You guys take care. And Nick Khan, don't do it. This is the L7C signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.